Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, for January 4, 2024, firearm and ammo seized in Harborview, four men arrested. Four men were arrested and charged after they were allegedly found with a 9mm pistol containing one round of ammunition and a magazine containing nine rounds of ammunition at a premises in Harbor Heights, Harborview in Kingston on Friday, December 15, 2023. Charged with unauthorized possession of ammunition and the possession of a prohibited weapon are 24-year-old Raul White, a businessman, 19-year-old Tajino Bailey, a chef, 21-year-old Rahim Maduri, a chef, and a 24-year-old Giovanni Darby, a businessman, all of Harborview addresses in the parish. Reports are that about 6.30 a.m., the police conducted a search of the premises and the weapon was found hidden inside the bathroom. All four men were subsequently arrested. On Tuesday, December 19, the men were charged following a question and answer session in the presence of their attorney. Their court dates have not been finalized. Families urged to solve conflicts after Cabby killed in alleged deadlift disputes. Against the backdrop of Manchester for the second consecutive year, starting with an alleged family dispute over deadlift as a possible motive resulting in the death of a man, a leader is calling for relatives to mediate over conflicts. There is a breakdown in our family structure. Manchester reported the highest number of domestic incidents last year and in some of the cases, we are seen where material things have been valued over life. People have lost their lives over disputes over land, houses or something like that, Costas of Manchester Garfield Green told the news on Wednesday. A day earlier, a police report said that Kraski's taxi operator Gary Taylor, 51, was at a house in Coca Walk about 5.05 p.m. when an argument developed between a relative and himself. The police said the relative used an object to hit Taylor in the head and upper body. Taylor collapsed and was taken to hospital where he died while undergoing treatment early Wednesday morning. Police sources said that the accused turned himself in following the incident. A grieving relative who spoke on condition of anonymity said that Taylor was trying to get relatives to move out of the house in Coca Walk when a tragedy struck. Gary only came here and was warning them to be careful because they were supposed to leave. Gary told them to leave because he got an order from a cousin overseas that they should leave. They disobeyed and planned to kill Gary. I ambushed them, ambush him, because them chop him in him head, the relative explained. Another relative, Michelle Cole, said that the family has been left devastated. It stemmed from a family dispute which started sometime last year, and the whole family is saddened right now. Gary was a very jovial person, friendly, hardworking, a family person. He stood with his kids and his wife. A very genuine person when it comes to family, she said. I am disappointed because what happened on Tuesday should not have happened. It should have been reported. The other day Gary's mom got into a minor argument with these people and it should have been reported. But I know she was sorry for them because it is all family, added Cole. On January 19, 2023, United Kingdom resident Michael Brown, 48, was gone down in my town where police theorized an alleged six-year family dispute over land and houses was the motive. He was shot and killed about 12.20 a.m. while in bed, four days after laying his 74-year-old mother to rest. His relative, Lemon Brown, 38, was charged with murder. Later that month, Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck reiterated the need for people to make a will in order to minimize a contention among relatives after death. Nothing creates more problem than deadlift, and it is the freeness mentality that we have in this country. Everybody feels they must get something. If it is not from the government, the pastors or the politician, they must get something out of what their parents leave. It belongs to them and they fight over it. There is no question of sharing appropriately. Everybody wants a lion's share and especially when regrettably the parents have not left a will. People must make a will. When you make a will, it at least indicates how the property will be shared when you die. He told his audience at the Church at Teachers College in Mandeville. Green, who said he is disturbed over the incident, is aiming to facilitate attitudinal change and social revitalization through the Manchester Beliefs, Values and Attitudes initiative to stem conflicts. This is something that I have focused on through our BVA initiative. 
I want to encourage our people, churches, teachers, schools, the police, and the GPs to do whatever we can to build their family values. There is a justice center in Mandeville where counseling is provided, mediation is provided, intervention is provided, and I would just encourage our people, whenever there is disputes, don't use violence to settle the matter. Seek help. There are too many avenues out there for help. Just to be the bold one to step up, step away from the issue and to seek help, said Green. When people lose their lives, it is just too much that is lost. It is not just the life that is gone, but the family that is hurting, and the cost on the health sector too, and the strain that it put on the police. I just want our people to be mindful, have some love, have some respect for life, have some compassion and tolerance. Also, be willing to negotiate or mediate over things, added Green. No communication link between murdered teen and accused men. A communication data forensic analyst expert testified that prior to the murder of 15-year-old Shanika Gray, there was no communication link between her phone and that of the two men accused of her death. Gregory Roberts is currently on trial in the St. James Circuit Court for the killing of the teen in 2017. Co-accused Maria Morrison had pleaded guilty in September 2022 and was sentenced to life in prison a month later. The information came out during the testimony of the officer in charge of the communication, forensics and the cybercrime division of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Deputy Superintendent Maurice Good, in court on Wednesday. DSP Good told the court that the call data records received from Digicel, specific phone numbers and international mobile equipment identity were analyzed. Among the numbers are those belonging to Roberts, his ex-girlfriend, Morrison and Gray. An IMEI is a 15 to 17 digit identifier that identifies the brand and model of mobile and the satellite phones. It also determines if an equivalent is valid. DSP Good pointed out that on January 29, the day in question, there was a communication between the men. Morris's mobile number was later associated with Gray's phone. DSP Good explained that Morrison had placed his SIM card in Gray's phone and vice versa. Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, Andrea Martin Swaby, asked DSP Good to clarify the association between the three numbers and Morrison, Roberts and Gray. We are seeing where there is direct communication between Mr. Roberts' mobile number and Mr. Morrison's mobile number. There were no direct or indirect communications with Ms. Gray's mobile number, stated at DSP Good during his digital and verbal presentation. During the trial against the co-accused Gregory Roberts in December, Morrison, under examination, told the court that he received Shanika's phone from Roberts a day after her death. He said he had placed a card in it and made two calls. Meanwhile, similarly to last month, there was a continued theme of malice between Roberts and his ex-girlfriend. On Wednesday, claims of Roberts' ex-girlfriend owing him money he had given her came out in another series of text messages between the two. At 10.06 a.m. on January 29, Roberts sent a text message to his ex-girlfriend. If I did give you the money on my phone, I would leave you with it, but you demand it by telling me that you are coming to sleep with me, because you know that is what I want. The text from Roberts read. At 10.06 a.m., Roberts sent another text. So you took my money on the false pretense, and it is not going so. At 10.07 a.m., Roberts' ex-girlfriend replied, Don't worry, baby. Try your luck with me one more time. It came out in court in December that Roberts had reportedly boasted of making a sacrifice as he warned his ex-girlfriend to repay the money she had fleeced him. Then, on December 14, it came out in court that Roberts had reportedly sent what appeared to be a threatening message to his ex-girlfriend, which suggested that he had killed someone and was willing to commit a similar act. DSP Good is the 15th witness to testify to date before a seven-member jury. He is expected to continue today. PSOJ concerned about the children painting sidewalk green in Prime Minister's constituency. The private sector organization of Jamaica is expressing concern regarding a recent video showing children painting sidewalks green in Prime Minister Andrew Hunes's West Central St. Andrew constituency. The PSOJ expressed its concern in a media release on Wednesday 
in which it also pressed the foreign statement of a political ombudsman. It is the firm stance of the PSOJ that our children, as some of the most vulnerable members of society, deserve a complete protection from any forms of exploitation, including those that resemble child labor, or place them in potentially compromising scenarios, the private sector group said. The involvement of young impressionable minds in evidently politically charged activities undermines their innocence and reflects poorly on our societal values, it continued. The PSOG said it was particularly concerned by the evident political divisiveness that this act could foster. The PSOG also reiterated its call for political leaders and affiliates to avoid inciting disharmony and the discord within the society. It said that the incident highlights the need for a political ombudsman equipped with the authority to implement disciplinary measures against the actions that contradict the political code of conduct. The role of such an officer is critical in maintaining the integrity of our political processes and ensuring that all actions by political entities align with the ethical standards expected by the Jamaican people, the PSOJ said. In November 2022, Former political ombudsman Donna Parchment Brown's seven-year tenure in office ended, but despite the pronouncement by the government that the role of the ombudsman would be subsumed by the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, more than one year later, the administration's commitment has failed to materialize.